On today's Locked on Jayhawks, it was a busy weekend as far as the transfer portal goes. Available players for KU basketball. Let's recap everything that's happened over the past couple of days. Look ahead to what's possibly upcoming here this week. Could we have a Hunter Dickinson decision? Uh, and Baco, the five-star freshman recruit, is he going to be visiting? KU lands a commitment. Jalen Tyson wraps up his visit. Lost to discuss on today's edition. You are Locked on Jayhawks. Your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Johnson, you can hear me as well, Monday through Friday on Rock Chalk Sports Talk, 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence. Thanks for making Locked On Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get any of your podcasts. You can also find us and subscribe to us on YouTube. On today's edition of Locked on Jayhawks, we're going to be breaking down uh, a lot of the recent news or things that have happened around KU basketball with um, all of their different um, recruiting news or or transfer portal news, whatever it is, maybe some stuff to, to look forward to. Is there a new player that's available now that would make sense for KU? First, this episode of Locked on Jayhawks, is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Uh, So we're going to start here uh, with our kind of weekend transfer portal recruiting roundup, whatever you want to kind of call this. Uh, Then we'll get into what's upcoming or what could be next this week. And then we'll finish up with a new player who uh, hit the open market, I guess, that you could say that, I don't know, maybe of interest for KU. Uh, So the first thing, uh, obviously, Artario Morris picked KU on Friday. I had a quick reaction to that afterwards on Friday. I also did a deep dive of him a couple weeks ago. I don't want to get too much more into it because we have talked a lot about it on this show. Um uh, on court fit, like really good player. I have some questions about the off court stuff uh, that is documented. So uh, what's the saying? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, with Primo Spears, because of that, obviously, he ends up picking Florida State, which right makes sense. KU fills up one of their other combo guard positions, one of their point guard positions. And so Primo Spears, you know, you don't have room on the roster for him. So you pick it up. And, and to where this leaves KU basically is – you'd be pretty surprised if they brought in any other like combo guard types at this point, it's pretty much with their scholarship allotment, big man wings. Like that's going to be what they're looking for at this point um, in time. Now, Jalen Tyson wrapped up his visit over the weekend for KU. And it becomes interesting because just looking at the scholarship count for KU, right? You have um, one open scholarship essentially at this point, right? So you have, uh, the the returning players with Dewan Harris, KJ Adams, Ernest Uday, and Zuby Edgefer, right? And then Kyle Cuff. So you have five players returning right now. Then you have four incoming freshmen with Chris Johnson. And now you're up to nine players, right? And if you're only going to have 12 scholarships because of the uh, self-imposed sanctions, then that leaves you with three openings at that point in time. And with those three openings... Um, you now are bringing on two transfers, Nicholas Timberlake, and now Arteria Morris. That leaves you with one scholarship in theory. Well, if you're recruiting Hunter Dickinson, you just had the visit with Jalen Tyson. Do you have to wait on the Hunter Dickinson decision before you go out and get Jalen Tyson? Theoretically, by the numbers, by the math, yes. But I'm here to tell you, like, KU is going to figure out the scholarships. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They will figure it out, and you will move on from it later. There are lots of ways they can go about it, right? Whether it is somebody like a Kyle Cuff at that point transferring because now there is another combo guard in there. Now, I don't necessarily expect that to happen. I, I think he enjoys being on KU and everything, and more power to him if if that's what he wants to do and he wants to try to fight his way up the ladder, right? I'm, I'm never going to diss a kid for doing that. I think in today's day and age of college basketball where you have all these kids wanting to transfer for that immediate playing time, and I don't ever blame someone for doing that, but I think it should gratify the players who do want to stick around and try to battle it out a little bit more. Now, nonetheless, um, who knows? Maybe that's still on the table. Maybe it's not. Maybe one of the freshmen that you have coming in, there was the Chris Johnson scrubbing of all his KU social media. Was that something of note? Was it nothing, right? Was it just a, a teenager that something happened, right? I, I don't know. Um, could you open up scholarship that way? Sure. Of course you could. Uh, so th- th- there's multiple ways you could just do it that way. There is the avenue of, and I don't know, this would be pretty brash, 
if you did it before the NCAA came out with their uh, the IRP, their their final resolution on KU, but basically where you had a kid be a walk on in scholarship levels, but you're using NIL money that they're getting a paid scholarship. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that that is something that KU is going to do at some point, that a bunch of other schools are going to do at some point, that other schools already have done at different points in time. I do wonder, though, the logistics of it for Kansas until you get the IRP decision, because what if the IRP goes, wait, you have like 14 scholarship players on your team, which means one or two of them is basically a walk on that you're paying with NIL money. And yet you said last year that you're self-imposing these sanctions, which included the loss of scholarships. Um, so you're basically skirting around your own self-imposed sanctions. We're going to hammer you with more stuff, right? It would have to come after their decision, possibly. Although technically Kansas doesn't have to really release that information of who's on scholarship, who's not. And also some another way they could kind of work around this. They technically they said the way that it was worded was that there was, it was a loss of three scholarships over three years. They did not clarify which year they're going to lose the scholarships. Normal math would be, okay, they'll lose one every year. But in theory, if Kansas had uh, enough of these good players that wanted to come into Kansas, they could be like, well, let's just kick it down the road a little bit. And so let's you know, not lose any scholarships this next year. We'll have a full 13, and then we'll lose one the next year and two the year after that. And the year that we lose the two, even though that sounds harsh to be like, ah, oh, we're only going to have 11 scholarship players, that would be a year that you do the workaround where you basically have a walk-on, be getting NIL money to be the payment. So it's like you have a 12th or maybe even you go further down the line and get a 13th guy. So there are lots of ways that they can work around that. Um, so just because Arterio Morris picked KU, I don't think that discludes at all Kansas from still trying to and hoping they're going to get Hunter Dickinson and Jalen Tyson. And, and, you know, you could add even, even the, the extra like positive of or uh, outlook of oh what if Kevin McCuller comes back too and now Jalen Tyson's already committed and Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCuller how would you figure out that scholarship again they have ways that they will figure this stuff out so don't worry about it they'll get it worked out basically is the uh, underlying sentiment there so Tyson wrapped up his visit though um, I I don't know what the plan is there uh, let's actually get into that what's upcoming what's what could be on the ledger next for KU maybe this upcoming week uh, with some interesting stuff. First, though, this episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. You know, uh, one of my favorite things with FanDuel is they have these boosts every day. They do different promotions. Um, I'm always just in on the boost. Try to get like the positive EV. They have a lot of stuff where it's like, well, you do this $10 same game parlay on like NBA playoffs. And if it's plus 400 odds, you got to read all the things and like three plus legs, whatever. And if you win, it's great. And if you don't win, you get like $10 back in bonus bets sometimes when they do those promos. It's awesome. And then I'll use the the bonus bets if you don't win the bet and you, you put it on something else and hopefully you win, you get your money back and more. It's great. Um, so definitely check out FanDuel. They've got a great interface. It's super easy to use. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 and older in select states. First online real money wager. Only $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star casino llc gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash rg colorado iowa michigan new jersey ohio pennsylvania illinois tennessee and virginia 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in arizona 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in connecticut 1-800-9-WITH-IT in indiana 1-800-522-4700 or visit kansasgamblinghelp.com in kansas 1-877-770-STOP in louisiana gambling help uh enema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Visit MarylandGamblingHelp.org in Maryland, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY, or text HOPE-NY to 467-369 in New York, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming, or visit www.1800gambler.net in West Virginia. All right, back into it here with Locked on Jayhawks. Uh, what is upcoming? What could be on the ledger this week? for KU. So they get the, the commitment from Arteria Morris, Jalen Tyson, 
wraps up. Primo Spears picks a different school. Well, Hunter Dickinson, uh, I believe, finished up his visit with Villanova. So now it's just decision mode. How long is that decision going to take? I have no idea, but it does seem like he's done with visits. You would think it is going to be something where, like, coming in the next week or two, that sounds like a reasonable timeline here. Now, Dickinson has been very uh, tight to the chest with information. Like, there's been the occasional thing that's come out from his own party in his own podcast that he does. But for the most part, he's kept it pretty tight. I think part of that is intentional. Um, it's just kind of smart business, to be completely honest, the way that he's handled this to try to get the NIL money up from all these different schools, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, more power to him for doing that. Now, um, I, I would imagine all five of those schools that he visited, whether it was an unofficial, like with Maryland and Georgetown, it was, I, I think it was just like an unofficial visit because I'm pretty sure he lives like, you know, 20 minutes away. So he just, you know, went over and no, oh, boom, here I am. Right. So Maryland, Georgetown, Kentucky, Villanova, and Kansas uh, with Villanova, Kentucky, and Kansas being the three ones that he visited. Those are, I would assume the main ones that are in the race here. And I don't think anybody else is going to kind of emerge at this point in time. Who are the favorites? Uh, if I'm completely guessing, and this is just based on like other industry sources or, or looking around, it feels like Maryland, Kansas. And then I, I feel like Kentucky is the ultimate wild card here. I, I, I never knew from the get go if, if this was a ploy to get that NIL money up or if Kentucky was a real thing. So I, I don't know, maybe Kentucky would throw in there, Kentucky, Maryland, and Kansas, but I say that watch, you'll go to like Georgetown or Villanova. You just don't know there. There's not a ton of information out there that said, I do kind of get the sense that you're, yeah, you're going to get that, that decision probably in the next week or so. I, I think there was, I forget if it was on his podcast or where he said it in an interview, maybe with uh, the 24 seven sports guy with Maryland. Um, I think Jeff Ehrman is his name. And he kind of talked about that. Like, yeah, he's, he's almost ready for this to be done and that he, it's been kind of a stressful process and all that stuff. So maybe that would make you think it's going to come this week that now that his visits are done, like with Nicholas Timberlake, right? He finished up his visits. I'm trying to think he committed to Kansas. I want to say on Wednesday, I believe that's right. Like Wednesday afternoon. So who knows? Maybe we get a similar timeline here to Hunter Dickinson now that he is uh, done, but we'll be on the lookout for that. And if we do find out about something, we'll have a uh, locked on Jayhawks, whether it's a bonus episode or a full episode, probably both at that point, uh, whether he does pick KU or does not. Um, I think also with Jalen Tyson, it feels like to me, the decision doesn't seem to be super imminent, like in terms of this week or something, like not quite the same timeline as Hunter Dickinson. Now, who knows? That could be back to the scholarship talk. Maybe Kansas doesn't want to play the musical chairs game with figuring out the scholarship openings. And maybe it is for them going, well, um, if we don't get Hunter Dickinson, we'd love to have you. And so he has to wait on that. But again, I, I do think Kansas would like I don't I don't think they are um, dependent on each other. I think they are independent decisions, in my opinion. Um, so I, I think that with Jalen Tyson, he had the Cal visit. Sounded like he liked it a lot. Uh, had the KU visit. I'm, I'm sure it went well and everything. Okay, he has a lot to offer and typically visits go well. Um, so we'll see if he's just like, ah, I got to decide between these two schools or if he decides to take other visits. There was some talk that Auburn was trying to set up a visit. I think one of the former Texas Tech assistants, one of them's at Cal. I think another one or, or something like that is, is at Auburn now. So we'll see if they end up getting a visit. If other schools get a visit, if more schools open things up to try to um, get involved in this. If he doesn't end up taking other visits, then you probably get the sense that, yeah, maybe it would be a quicker decision because then at that point, you're basically deciding between two schools. I will say it's funny when you look back in the past, at how a lot of these things go, you know, this has been more spread out um, decisions, I guess, that have come KU's way, right? Nick Timberlake was a week or two ago. Gosh, it feels like a month ago at this point. Um, Hunter Dickinson is, I don't know, maybe going to be this week. Like, what if Jalen Tyson ends up being in three weeks? What if there's somebody in the draft? You've tried, like, everything's been spread out. In some years past, it feels like all this stuff would avalanche at the same, like, it's like they get one commit one day, the next day they get another commit, the next day they get another commit. It would just all funnel in to a short period of time, but maybe that'll be end up something that uh, happens there. Now, the other one is of interest is Mackenzie Mbako. He is the five-star freshman. We'll have a deep dive on him later this week. Uh, top 10 recruit, basically everywhere you look, like number seven to number nine kind of range. Um, really good player, stretch four, athletic four type that could probably play a little bit of the three. Has good shooting potential, but were the numbers there? I don't know. Uh, th there was a release from Adam Zagoria that he was visiting St. John's. 
and that there were four schools that he planned on visiting, uh, including St. John's, and one of them was Kansas. So I, I think the Mbaco visit is supposed to be this week. Some of that scheduling stuff, we saw it with the Harrison Ingram one. We, we see it all the time. Like things get delayed, things get moved around. So we'll see. But it sounds like Kansas has enough interest and he has enough interest to at least visit Kansas. And, and who knows if they're the front runner or not, or if it is the, one of these other schools. But the fact that you're one of the four he's visiting does make it a big deal here. And of the four schools that were the schools he was going to be visiting, I think it was St. John's, Indiana, Louisville, and Kansas. What's notable there? Well, Indiana, Louisville, and Kansas are all Adidas schools. And so if you have this kid in Mbaco who was committed to a Nike school at Duke, sometimes you have the questions with these, you know, grassroots, high-level, uh, five-star recruits, like, are they almost funneled into a specific shoe brand? Well, with Mbaco, I, I think you can clearly see that's not really the case, which make it's helpful for Kansas, right? You're not going to get a, a all-out Nike kid. You're just not, right? It's just kind of how recruiting goes sometimes. So uh, that is good news for Kansas, and he'll be visiting. And gosh, could you imagine if, if KU – Landed commitments from Tyson, Dickinson, and Mbaco. Again, no idea how they'd make it work scholarship-wise, but not worried about it because I know they would figure it out. That would be a pretty darn remarkable team. That's the ultimate dream at that point for landing all three. I don't, I don't necessarily think the odds would be in your favor to do that, but you are set up pretty well where if you can get you know, two of those three, I mean, if you just get Dickinson, it's a success on its own. But if you get two of those three, like if you don't land Dickinson, but you land Tyson and Mbaco, it sucks, but... That's still a really good haul. So Kansas set up pretty well right now in the portal. Uh, we're going to finish up here with a new player hitting the open market as far as uh, college basketball recruiting goes. We'll discuss that next. So the newest player to hit the, um, you can't call it transfer portal. He was a freshman or, or was going to be a freshman uh, to hit the open market, I, I keep saying, is Ron Holland. He is a five-star recruit. He is listed as the number four player on the 24-7 sports composite. Uh, he was committed to Texas. So this is, I mean, this is a big deal. This kid hits the market for two reasons. One, because it gives another option for Kansas to try to kick the tires on that gives them another elite player that is available, right? It also hurts one of the teams you're going to be competing with in the conference. So kind of both good things here for Kansas. Is he a real KU option? I don't know. In theory, you're talking about like a six foot eight forward type who is known for being uber athletic, could probably play him at the three or the four and kind of think like the way that I've read the scouting reports. Now, I could be totally off on this. I'm thinking like a Josh Jackson type with maybe a little bit less guard skills than Jackson has just based on the athleticism, though, in six, eight and how he would kind of play that four position for KU switchable defender like he would be a very good player for Bill Self. The shooting is the question mark there. How realistic is it, though? Like, KU wasn't seen as, I, I think it was Arkansas and UCLA that he chose Texas over. Um, I want to say there were a couple others. I don't, I don't know. It's uh, Maybe Kentucky. I feel like that's probably just a good guess in general if Kentucky was in it. Uh, but the G League Ignite was also somebody that, um, but, and it's very interesting because Texas obviously had the decommitment of their other five-star recruit, and he ended up going to, I believe, the G League Ignite to play, like, professional basketball. So I wonder if this could be the same thing, if the G League Ignite didn't get as many kids committed from this class yet, and they were going, shoot, we're losing out to a lot of these guys on NIL money. We got to up our bids, and maybe they're able to get something done here. So that could be indicative of that. He did say when he decommitted, Texas was still on the school list that he's considering. Basically, he's just reopening his recruit, I would imagine, in part because it's a different coach than he probably committed to to begin with, with Rodney Terry. So I don't know how likely this is for KU, but theoretically, it's never bad to have more options out there. And he plays the four position. He's really athletic. He's switchable on defense and he has super high potential. Those are all things that should at least be a little bit interesting to KU. Uh, so I'll be interested to monitor where that one goes. It does feel like to me, though, that I don't know, maybe the uh, things are more progress progressed along. So maybe that's just why but that things feel more realistic for Mbaco than they do for Holland. And I don't know how realistic or, or how, I guess, probable would be the right word Mbaco is, but it feels like that percentage would be higher than the Holland one. Again, though, that could just be because Mbaco is a few weeks past the point that Holland is in terms of when he decommitted. All right, so uh, lots to look forward to this week 
with uh, KU basketball related news. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode of the show. You can check out anything with the Locked on Jayhawks podcast, wherever you find any of your podcasts. You can also find us, like, subscribe to us on YouTube. Have a good rest of your day. We'll see you on next episode.